welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain. Yo, we got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please, uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple lessons from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with the stole cold facts and allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the nerdiverse welcome to the masters of the nerdiverse reviews aka motm reviews aka the best podcast you can listen to on earth e-a-r-f this moonwalker of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeart, Google Play, and of course, Spotify. I am, of course, your cosmic host, Mike G. And back with us is the one and only she who shall be named. She's not Voldemort. At least I don't think so. Tootie Odin, are you Voldemort? I am not Voldemort, baby. I am the man in the mirror today. Are you the man in the mirror? I am. I would sing, but then we would get DMC. I was, <laughs> I was just about to sing it too. That's how, so how are we going to get through this? Mm-hmm. That tiny pregnant pause was just enough of a of a reason to ban us because they knew we were trying they to. They, they know. The <laughs> they algorithm know. knows when you feel it. <laughs> Can you feel it? Can you feel? All right, I'm done. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Carry on. How are we going to get through this episode without being sued? I really have no clue. You know what? We're just going to have to figure it out. But because I got, I got, I got songs in my soul today. I got I got a song to myself. Come on, brothers, dig deep. Come on, brothers, dig deep. If you've looked at the thumbnail, if you've read the uh, subject line of this episode, this podcast, where we review some of the uh, Nerdiverse's most shiniest supernovas and some that are not so brightly lit, this one would be a red dwarf. This one is a big, bright one. 1988, directed by... Jerry Kramer, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Bum, 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 bum. What? I can't. I can't do that. You can't. Do I, that. I am. I am very excited. I think I turned you down from doing this so many times um, when you were asking me. Simple because I'm like, who knows? Who knows what it is besides me and you? And then it, it turns out that's probably the exact reason why we need to do a review on this movie. Hundred percent. Now. I talk to other people in the podcasting community to which I all appreciate and love. And sometimes in small talk, I'll just ask them, Hey, remember the part Moonwalker win? And like, what's Moonwalker? And it's like, what? I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. You do the, you know, the blink meme. Like you don't know what Moonwalker is. And you'd be surprised. Like most of the Xennials don't know what Moonwalker is. They have no idea. And that's kind of a bloody shame. Kind of how, the idea of Michael Jackson has been kind of drilled out of popular culture when there was a time when he was literally the king of pop. Oh, well, he's still the king of pop. That hasn't changed. I think a lot of that obviously has to do with, you know, his, his face being in the news for so much negativity that he was never um, found guilty of, you know, you know, so a lot of that, I'm sure a lot of that, his deterioration as far as his celebrity is concerned had to do with that. But on the other end, Every diehard fan is still a diehard fan, and he has plenty to this day. So Absolutely. And it's funny, when I posted an image of this, I was super excited when I finally got a yes out of you. <laughs> You're like, okay, yes, yeah, let's do it. Uh, someone tweeted at us, that's at M Nerdiverse. Uh, this is one of the, this is probably the best concert film of all time. No kidding. I don't know who that was, but they're not wrong. I, I, I 100% agree. They're not wrong. And it's one of those things where it's like a touch. For some people, it feels like a touchy subject, even talking about Michael Jackson. But like you said, the man's legacy outweighs his tort history. And a lot of that you can feel in this Moonwalker as well. He addresses it, actually, his his relationship with the media, which has right. never been on even ground, I think. Right. right. It, it's it's so I'm so glad you, you, you mentioned that because that's. This entire movie, the same, the same with um, Thriller, uh, which I kind of hope we can do a review on Thriller too. But that'd be kind of cool. Um, he he 
there, there, there were, they were his response to what the record companies were doing to him essentially. So yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's so cool that he, he was able to open himself up to be such, uh, you know, to such creativity that this is the way he decided to kind of stick the middle finger at them, if, if you will, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. And I don't think Jerry Kramer directed anything else after this. <laughs> Just, no kidding. <laughs> I don't, you know, maybe we were wrong. I have to look into that, you, but yeah. You know, what's interesting is, do you remember uh, the, the Joe Pesci scene uh, when he, he, he goes down and he starts turning the thing and he, and he, he mentions his name, Frankie uh, Ladeo. Yeah. And and it's basically just a reverse name of his actual. Um, uh, what was it? His record? His uh, his, his, his uh, manager. His yeah, manager. or his manager, right? Yeah. So it's just funny how he still he sat there poking fun at somebody who was basically his real life enemy number one and stuck his name in the movie, which you know, like a cool passive aggressive name drop of of sorts. So anyway, um, I thought that was kind of cool. Absolutely, I, I love that. the name Frankie De- DeLeo right now. So it's like, oh man, I I can't believe. I totally remember that name, but anyway, let's uh, let's go in order. So I'm sorry. <laughs> they never pull it, pull it concentrate, back, concentrate, <laughs> smooth operation. Right. Smooth right. operation. Pull it uh, back. What was your first experience with Moonwalker? My first experience with Moonwalker, I I don't know if it was a VHS or if it was just on TV. I don't remember physically, tangibly seeing a tape, but I assume it was a tape because we were able to watch it over and over. Um. I was I was four when it came out. We were definitely watching it. Um, I had the biggest, hugest crush on uh, Brown and Quentin Adams back then. Yeah, uh, who's in the uh, who's in his bad video in in the, in the Moonwalker uh, mm-hmm. movie? Oh my god! So you know, it, my my first experience with Moonwalker was absolute joy, absolute one hundred percent joy. There's no question about it. No changing it. Um, Speed Demon. Speed Demon was probably one of the most memorable parts because of the cowboys with the giant heads. Yeah, man. Um, the uh, the Japanese men um, walking with the cameras yeah. towards Michael Jackson, and me as a kid thinking that that was like a herd of elephants walking towards him, just because I couldn't like um, wrap your brain around it. Wrap my brain around exactly what was going on. So just all these things that you know, when I watch it now, they come back even today as a, as a four year old kid. And there's not many very there's not very many um, movies, uh, documentaries, anything. There's nothing on 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 screen visually that can take you back so far. You know, it's very powerful to have something like that be a part of your life, and um, it's very rare. So, I mean, whatever yeah. whatever uh, wh- whatever magic this movie uh, like oozed through the screen, it worked because it still has me entrapped today. Like, I, I love this movie so much. It's My weird. kids love this movie so much. You know what I mean? It's weird because I remember, and this is before I, I had the uh, added luxury of being disenchanted, you know what I mean, with media mm-hmm. and marketing. Yeah. Right. But when I was a kid, there was a couple of things in the world that I saw to be magical, right? Like Disneyland, was, a, of course, was a magical, otherworldly place, right? For some reason, McDonald's, was very magical as a kid. <laughs> like it was this unworldly place because the McDonald's we had were very like art deco, like fifties sci-fi deco. The McDonald's we had around here, uh, and the other thing was Moonwalker was this magical tape that we had. We had a yes on VHS, and I would watch it and just be entranced. It's one of those where I watched it so much that the tape snapped. And my parents had to buy another copy. Oh, I remember cool. that. I'm happy they did that for you. A hundred percent. Because Michael Jackson was extremely important as as probably the most brightest face of representation at the time, other than like Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? That's right. They were they were hand in hand at the time, weren't they? Yeah. I wanted to be like Mike. Yeah, I remember that. And my name was Mike, so I was like, yeah, we went in. <laughs> I was super like, yeah, Michael rules. Uh, <laughs> all the Michaels rule, uh, the collective. Uh, I remember every single one. <laughs> every single every one. Single one. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching this with my mom and my dad, and my mom singing the music with me, and me like be my little empath self would like start crying during Ben. Ben would always get me. Me too. Oh my god, what that split second that? of Ben would always get me. <laughs> me too, and it's like, oh my god, I want a rat, and I, I don't really, I never really wanted a rat. But it was just like, oh my god, that song, yeah, like you were, you were like an emotional, 
Like, I was an emotional we, kid, man. We an emotional kid at that moment. Yeah. You, and you know what else? Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. In the beginning of Moonwalker, there is kind of like a like a discography, you know, a, a brief discography in the beginning of, 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 of the yeah. film. Where it, it goes through his, his music videos and just his music in general. And throughout, they have um, uh, clips of them showing the audience, you know. Uh, yeah. What used to scare me about that was they would faint. Like yeah, they would pass yeah. out, and I'd be like, "Hey, if like if I go see Michael Jackson, am I gonna die? Like, you're gonna die. You can't handle it. You, you it used to scare it. the crap out of me. All the girls fainting, like in front of them, that used to scare me so much. Like, what's wrong with them? Like, I used to think like, like, you know, when I was older, I would think Michael Jackson gave off some kind of like faint feel, like he was a mutant. I used to think Michael Jackson was a legit mutant. I knew something was wrong. I was like, there's something ain't right here. Like, something's going on. These women, there's something wrong with them. <laughs> like, they just and they're just dying yeah. in the audience. And, like, they're security right. guards are, like, pulling them out. Like, what is he doing? Yeah. they're pull- He's pulling out a bunch of just b- l- limp bodies. And, like, as a four-year-old, you're not understanding exactly why the- why oh, they you're... suddenly went limp. And it's just like, what the, what the hell? <laughs> like, yeah. I I think I remember my mom being like, would you want to meet Mike Jackson? I'm like, nah. I, I'll just explode from his awesomeness with my whole body. <laughs> would just implode and that scene that early scene where they like like you said it's like it's a giant discography and there's these weird archival shots of gandhi and john lennon you know in like in like president kennedy <laughs> oh right yeah I, it was like a they were like subliminally messaging like peace or something you know like throughout um throughout what's the song uh, throughout man in the mirror, oh, in the mirror. Yeah. yeah that's right yeah so yeah, good stuff, man. Good stuff. It's so oh, it's so hard not to sing the music while talking about. I'm the no film. kidding. I think we can. You know, I think we can. You know, hum a few bars if nothing else. But you know, when the when the time comes, right? Of of everything, as far as the discography goes, what what was your favorite part? Like, did you like uh, like the Speed Demon or, or Bad or like? Did you have any any of those that well, like or were like stood out for you? Absolutely, I had some on my list. Of course, Ben. I remember getting in a schoolyard fight because someone badmouthed Ben and I wasn't having it. And I wow. had a little fit. I was like, you leave Ben alone. Ben it's is pure. Song. <laughs> it's a super good, not the song, the rat. Someone was teasing the rat. Oh I was, my. I was like, you leave Ben alone. Cause they were being punks. And I was, <laughs> and I was gonna, I was gonna get my butt beat for Michael Jackson. That's how bad it was. Uh, of course, can you feel it? The video, can you feel it? Can you feel I've it? told Tootie this story before. <laughs> Me and my cousins were young. Uh, we were unsupervised for maybe like five minutes. <laughs> and we got the idea to grab the glitter from like the construction paper area of our house and literally reenact the Can You Feel It video by throwing <laughs> glitter all over the living room. So we had these hands, these fistfuls of glitter and be like, can you feel it? And like throwing it on, on the carpet and on you know, the, <laughs> on the windows. No. And my cousin uh, was going, was doing the beat, you know, that. <laughs> my mom walked in like, what the effing hell? <laughs> Needless to say, we spent the whole night cleaning to Michael Jackson, which wasn't a bad idea either. Something tells me you guys felt it. Yeah, we felt it all right. <laughs> I'm not going to, that's the furthest I'll go on that. That is freaking hilarious uh him doing the robot with the robot stuck with me <gasps> yep that too yeah you know and you know certain scenes of course him doing the moonwalker for the first time the abc claymation the abc claymation right 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 and it, it had like a, a california raisins feel yeah, to it it sure did yeah it sure for did. those who remember the california raisins bro uh yeah that montage was amazing and of course I don't even count Speed Demon as part of the montage, right? It was its, it was its own little movie, wasn't it? Yeah, it was its own little movie. Like, I, everything up to bad is yeah. the montage, you know what I mean? Right, I agree. I agree completely. Bad, you know, bad's its own little thing, too. You know what broke me, though? Uh, Dirty Diana. The Dirty Diana section. Where he was getting I, all, where he was all dry. Happen, didn't that happen after? That happened before bad. That happened before bad. Oh, did it? Yeah. Because um, I'm, at, I don't want to get too at, far ahead. At the end of Moonwalker, he does perform it on stage, doesn't he? No, at the end of Moonwalker, he performs uh, the Beatles song. He performs, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I have the notes here. He performs uh, Come Together. 
I think. Oh, that's right. You're yes. absolutely right. Yep, you're right about that. But yeah. I never see the end of Moonwalker because I always fell asleep by then. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as a kid, I wasn't ready for that kind of action that Michael Jackson was laying down about Dirty Diana. <laughs> it, it was a bit dirty, wasn't it? Was, it, was, it was too dirty for young Mikey short and pants. It's that there's not, not one bit of dirtiness at all in it whatsoever. It's so fucking... Like, provocatively unprovocative. It was dangerous, dude. It felt dangerous. It, no pun intended. You know what I mean? Like, I had the biggest crush on the guitar player. And I also, yeah. I wanted I wanted her and I wanted to be her. Like, oh, dude. that's so cool. She's right there grinding the guitar. Like, her and Michael Jackson's hips, like, touching each other while they're, like, playing. Like, oh, man, that's so badass. Like, man, I was so jealous of her. <laughs> dude, I just remember Michael ripping his shirt open and the crowd literally dying. Right? No kidding. He was no like, this... Like, this isn't the same Michael Jackson from Can You Feel It? What's going on? <laughs> this isn't right. Uh, him dancing with the Elephant Man. Oh, love it. Right. Oh, But oh, I think that's alone. after. Isn't that after Speed Demon? Uh, Leave Me Alone comes after Speed Demon. Yep, it sure okay. does. Okay, then yeah. I won't jump the gun there. But yeah, not one little montage. Um, that's pretty much it. Especially the, the Dirty Diana part. That super broke my brain. Um and then we jump right into bad. Now I have to ask you, as a huge Weird Al Yankovic fan, what do you prefer? I'm fat or the kid version of I'm bad? Okay, I prefer I'm fat and the initial dialogue because they make, they kind of, they obviously parody the Michael Jackson one, but it's just, you ain't nothing, man. So it's just, it's just hilarious. Like, it's just, it's, it's a classic. So I, I prefer, um, his dialogue and I preferred that video because of the hilarity. But obviously I I'm I mean, bad's gonna be you you can't beat the original by any means. Like I'm sorry, I, I you're right, I love Weird Al so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh I, I do. But, yeah, uh, but we gotta do UHF one one of these days. Hey man, I'm down, I'm down. But that being said, I, he there's there would be no dude, there would be no weird out without Michael Jackson straight up. Uh, yeah, I'm Fat made his career, dude. I'm, I'm Fat basically made his career. He also did, um, what else did he do? Uh, Eat It. Yeah, I'm Eat fat It was a big one, too. That Eat was like his it. sequel. That was his sequel, Right, dude. exactly, man. There, there would be no weird without no MJ for show. So, yeah, Bad, you know? Like, the whole the whole thing about Bad is, is like you said, it, it's, it was a different side of, of Michael Jackson that we weren't able to experience it. And all of a sudden, like, bam, there he was. And we all, like, we soaked it up. Adults My, kids alike. We Michael that. Jackson will fight you, dude. First of all, right? Well, well, I think Bad came out after Beat It. Beat It, Beat It came out first, like yeah. the video, a song and video wise. I think it came out first, so it was an introduction to this this otherworldly person who was youthful and at the same time re- rebellious and at the same time really chill. And it was also the birth of leather Michael Jackson. Because you know Michael Jackson has phases, right? Yes, yes. There, so it was the it, birth of leather Michael Jackson, yeah. And it was leather Michael Jackson all the way up until it was Peace Ambassador Michael Jackson. And then he started wearing those those em- shoulder, like those, super sharp shoulder. The shoulder tassels and looking like M. Bison. Yeah. You know? Right, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah he started exactly. walking around like M. Bison. Dude. Oh, they look like Bison. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? I don't know. Oh, that's great. That's when he became stuff. the Earth Ambassador, dude. Dude had that dude had the had the hat and everything too. I think yeah, I'm telling you, Mike <laughs> Mike, man, with the one white yeah. glove. He looked like he was royalty, dude. <laughs> He Beautiful. looked like he was like the the prince of a sovereign nation is what he looked like, dude. Beauty. <laughs> That's legit how T'Challa would dress if, if Wakanda was real. He would dress like Michael Jackson. And- he would dress like Michael Jackson, no doubt. Yeah, no, man. No. And 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 I don't think we I don't think we can have it any other way. Just naturally, it just seems to be it's very royal. It's, it's a royal way to dress. I like the little prince dig at the end of I'm Bad, uh, in regards to him kind of. Saying where's Bubbles? Oh, Bubbles. Uh, what's he wearing? Bubbles is wearing a Prince T-shirt. He was like Prince T-shirt. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean. That's right. Prince T-shirt. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But I think the the best part of this entire film, and you've alluded to it earlier, is the entire Speed Demon section. It's the best. It's literally the best part of the film. I agree. I I think throughout from the, the from the I, lead up to the nightmare fuel puppets. Yep. Right. No kidding. Yeah. Th- those dudes, they were too much. The yeah. big ass headed cowboys. Yeah. They, they were too much for me. And Michael Jackson running through what I thought was the Warner Brothers lot. Right. Kind of look like oh, it. You, you know where that's at? That's that's uh, that's actually in Malibu Canyon. Really? 
it's it's burnt down now because of the fires that happened was was it one or two years ago but yes that little tiny ghost town of of western that 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 was in malibu canyon and that's actually where they filmed a lot of john wayne films nice man yeah Yeah. you know and it's it's no music it's just michael jackson and then michael jackson then bum rushing him i'm sorry i I hate michael jackson acting i gotta go (laughs) it's acting like he can't stop laughing for one second he can't stop laughing for one second looks into the camera he laughs the entire time like he's the worst actor but at the same time it kind of goes right with it right he runs good though he runs okay (laughs) he runs good (laughs) he runs good though a uh, land of the free, home of the weird. Home of the weird, right? Yeah. It's just amazing. I love this whole entire scene. I love how it jumps from live action people in suits to to uh, animat- to claymation, and then back to live action suits. Yeah, I, I loved <laughs> it's it. Goofy. I love I'll it. show you bad. I'll I show you guys. bad. I love those guys. And the other ones, the um, the little the the the. The fat dudes on the on the um. <laughs> Will you autograph my tummy? <laughs> Will you autograph my tummy? Which way did he go, Biff? Which way did he go, go Biff? Let's get him. <laughs> Let's get him. You know that whole scene is just burnt into my psyche. You know, as a kid, um, loving every second of it. Okay, do you remember when when uh he goes to the drive through and, and he's already he's already the bunny like he he already turns himself in in, in into yes. The bunny. Um, so Michael Jackson has to disguise himself. He runs into a costume uh, closet in, in a warehouse that's, that's supposedly on, on set in the studio and in, in the film yeah. because he's trying to uh, escape from uh, crazy fans. So he puts on this bunny suit. After he puts on the bunny suit, he walks out and everybody's like, oh, it's just a stupid bunny. And they, they have, they're none the wiser. Yeah. He, gets on, he gets on a motorcycle and he goes, and everybody realizes that it's him. So he has them go on a chase and he's on this motorcycle, hence starting the song Speed Demon. So anyway, there's a part where he goes to the drive-thru, um, a, a random drive-thru, and he hits the speaker and he keeps going. And then the the group of, of crazy fans come right behind him. And as they're going through the drive-thru, a whole mess of, um, was it French fries? Or cheeseburgers or something? Cheeseburgers. And they're just like, like dolloped with a bunch of ketchup. Like, was it cheeseburgers? That's basically my question. Like, what was it? Was it French fries? I thought it was cheeseburgers. It, it shot like a billion cheeseburgers. And, right, yeah. It, a whole it, it, was t- it was on B. So it was like, da, 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 da. cheeseburgers, ketchup, speed, demon. Yeah, no, that's exactly what happened. And I, I was just like, what the heck is that? When I was a kid, I used to think it was walnuts. I'm like, why are they putting walnuts on ketchup? No, okay. Or ketchup on walnuts, yeah. It was, yeah. One of my top five hypest moments in my life where I almost got disciplined is from Speed Demon, and this is my first time watching it. And there's the scene where, my, where right after that, where Michael Jackson goes through the hotel and he turns into Pee Wee Herman for that split second. Yeah, get yeah. your ticket right, right? Yep. Oh my God, yes. And he and he turns his his bike into a motorboat or like a speedboat. Yes, that's my that's my favorite part. And, <laughs> Demon, yeah, that's fast. And he goes into the cosmos and starts flying in the clouds. It's so fucking good. I literally got up and just started running around in circles. Like, I didn't know what to do with the energy. <laughs> it's still my favorite part. It still gives me oh, goosebumps. Yeah. Where he does the high pitch. You're giving me goosebumps now. That's so funny you said that. Yeah. Dude. I it's almost so like, cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's my, so, that's my, one of my we're top five. Geeking. We're not even doing a show right now. We're just straight geeking. I'm just sorry. But it's one of my five, top five hypest moments in my life. Same. Same. When he, when he, and then you hear the. Poof, from the from the freaking like uh like uh, was it like a rocket pack he has in his bag and he's like flying yeah like, the bike turns into uh yeah, it's so cool <laughs> it turns into a rocket jet and he starts moving he starts dancing in the clouds dude okay so end of speed demon i'm not not even not even exactly the end but this is something that me and you for the epilogue long. the epilogue of speed demon i need your autograph right, right here but let's talk about the dance though because oh my god yes so <laughs> Speed Demon's technically over. Michael Jackson got away, right? Uh, and he takes the suit off <laughs> and sits it down like on a rock. And he's in the middle of like, like Road Runner, Riley Coyote Desert. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the suit comes alive and challenges him to a dance off. Which, as a kid, I immediately thought Spider Man versus Venom, and how the suit had no characteristics of Michael Jackson, but 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 because he wore it for so long. The suit took the characteristics of Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. And so it, made, it reminded me of Venom as a kid. So I immediately put that, put two and two together. 
And then they start having a dance contest where the suit starts cheating. <laughs> you know, the suit starts doing cartoon Bugs Bunny wackiness and starts to beat Michael Jackson. And then Michael Jackson gives like this serious look on his face, like, oh, it's time to go to the next level. And he does the God spin where he turns into all the characters in the entire yep. sequence. Yep, he turns into Pee Wee Herman. He turns into. He turns uh, into um, Sy- Sylvester Stallone. He turns into Cher. He turns into uh, Tina Turner. He does turn into Sylvester Stallone where he's he's doing the, the jackhammer. He's doing the jackhammer, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I forgot about that. And he defeats the bunny, but then he gets that, I need your autograph right here. Uh, uh, officer pulls up on him while he's in the middle of dancing. Yeah, it's me and my uh, friend. And the bunny just totally left him hanging. Though. It turns out Michael Jackson was breaking the law of not dancing like you Michael should... Jackson because there was a sign that it just had the moonwalker feet, and then it had the the no the Michael Jacksoning head. right here. No Michael Jacksoning basically right here. Yeah. yeah. So he was Michael Jacksoning in in a in an illegal Michael Jacksoning zone. Yep. And when the, and when the him and the cop left. You saw that the bunny became one with nature and became, and just his face was like sharpened into a, into a mountainside. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, like Mount Rushmore. He was like, good game, no rematch. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Michael Jackson looks up at him and gives him the Grizzly Adams nod. Like, he gives uh, him the Grizzly Adams. He's, uh, <laughs> he's dancing. He's singing in the sky, holding his cowboy hat, you know? Ah, this film, uh, we jump back into another um, montage of uh, pretty much Michael Jackson, like you said, thumbing his nose at the media. Leave me alone. The leave me alone montage, which was Leave so- me alone was one of my is still one of my all time favorite videos, and it was back then. And back then, I didn't really know why. Obviously, because you know I, I was a baby. But um, the the leave me alone video was his his entire body was was a theme park was 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 a roller coaster and and the whole idea was that he was being used and being pulled in different ways and it was just and this predates neverland ranch absolutely yes it predates neverland ranch oh my god you're right about that so you can kind of see echoes of neverland ranch kind of like him all these crazy rumors about him having a hyperbaric time chamber his relationship with elizabeth taylor um, it's all brought to light in the section of him f- constantly fighting. His purchase of the elephant man's bones. His purchase of the elephant man's bones. Him dancing with the elephant man is one of the coolest scenes. Best scenes ever, absolutely. With, with the ball and chain attached to both of them. Yep, because he's chained. So oh, subliminal. Yeah. Michael Jackson really thought this one through. Uh, it also scared me because it had a very Willy Wonka vibe to it. Especially there's a scene where he's going into a, a water tunnel and there's these slamming teeth. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you know, it had a very, uh, you know, the Peter Gabriel song "Sledgehammer." Yes, that video. Sledgehammer. The and the 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 animated one where all this crazy stuff is going on. I I think I think the best part of 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 this video, or at least the part that that brought us back to an easy groundable state, were the puppies, the dogs inside the the adjoining um, rockets. Oh, I was thinking of the dogs playing poker. The real life dogs playing poker in that in that scene, you know. What I mean? Oh yeah, no kidding, huh? Yeah, that's they're what that... dogs and they're playing poker. And they're playing poker. <laughs> All right, wrong, wrong, wrong show. Wrong pot, wrong podcast episode. Wrong podcast review, right? So, this is a this movie is pretty much split in two parts. Uh, the first part is a giant montage of Michael Jackson's career. The second part is a legit film completely wrapped around the idea of smooth criminal which i think was at the time one of his newest singles wasn't it uh yes it wasn't an old song at this point right no it wasn't an old song but it was a known song i think was was smooth criminal was this smooth criminal video built around moonwalker i want to say it was i want to say it was too because yes i want to say it was too because i've seen the video separately from Moonwalker, and it's the same exact. It's the same exact video. So okay, and this is where the, the the review gets interesting because I need to paint a picture of exactly what universe this is. Um, so it starts with Michael Jackson in this weird heaven like space and time, and it's him playing with a bunch of kids, and it's all innocent, very Michael Jackson, right? Very on yeah. brand because you know Michael Jackson loved the kids. 
and in, in fact, and and legally, mind you, thank you very much. Um, yes. And the, it's I love that you brought about the, the beginning of that of that scene that because even even in 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 cinematics, it's brighter. It's so like it's cloudy yeah. and and hard hard to even see because it's so bright. So it's very yeah. dreamlike. It's very exactly. dreamlike. Exactly. Uh, he has a little girl that looks like Carol Ann from Poltergeist. Yeah, and and even the way they're talking, they're not talking clearly. You know what I mean? It's very weird. Uh, so the little, uh, the, they have a dog with them, like a little spot or whatever, scruffums. Then the dog gets loose and runs into the, a dark, evil forests, and they find this rock, <laughs> this kind of like this mountainside that literally has like a spider emblem built into it. And this is when we get into our plot, the entire plot of this other half of the of the film where Michael Jackson stumbles upon the evil lair of, as you mentioned earlier, Frankie Ledeo, get his name, right. Get the (laughs) bugs and drugs, bugs and drugs, smooth operation. And he's playing it like a super villain. L E D E O Joe Pesci with the hard left turn. With his spider's motif, with the with the tarantulas everywhere, ew, icky, icky, right? Frankie Ladea, what did he say? Remember that. Remember, Remember that. that. Remember yeah. that. And Michael Jackson is just looking down at it, like, ew, you know what I mean. And of course, it's the infamous scene that we say to ourselves literally almost every other day, which is, "Look at this." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. I say this to myself all the time. And by the way, that's not the reaction that you have when you see billions of spiders and tons of spider webs and you have three babies that you're taking care of. Michael you Jackson know? just seems disappointed in him. Yeah, like, he just seems really upset, like hurt. <laughs> like, you know what? Come on, come on, brothers. Come on, brothers. Come on, brothers. Come on, brothers. He stumbled upon the super kingpin lair and it flash forwards to the future. Like the super future, right? Like Frankie Dale has already won. It seems like... <laughs> Because yeah, all the kids, because because all of a sudden it turns very dystopian. It's very dystopian. They're like in this weird Final Fantasy VII universe where it's all dark and smoky, and the kids are all like street vagrants now. They're like homeless. Right, right. it's weird, right? And the, there's no explanation as to what r- really happens, and with the exception of you have to assume that Frank Ladeo did take over. Yeah, Frank Ladeo won with all the drugs and spiders, right? Because <laughs> that was the that was the mission. Uh. You know, from heaven, Earth was heaven, and then big business took over and made it a dark place. Is what I'm gathering from this analogy, <laughs> right? Earth song. This is before Earth song, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so we fast forward to the future. The kids are on the roof, looking at shooting stars, which is a a repeating motif, right? In this section, and Frankie Ledeo is still after that little girl for some odd reason. Like what? What, what is she? No, just... what, what what it is is he's not after the kids. He's using the kids as bait because he wants Michael Jackson. He wants to he wants to drain Michael Jackson with bone marrow to bait, fuel kind of yeah. <laughs> Whatever his reason to want Michael Jackson is never. It's not really clear <laughs> why they want to capture Michael Jackson. Right? Yeah, it, it's not really clear. But you kind of assume that it's because Michael Jackson's such a good guy that they're trying to uh, replace good with evil. Yeah, so, yeah, that My, that's kind of as far as they kind of go into it. And you see that because Michael Jackson, out of everyone, is the only one wearing a pure white suit, right? In the darkness, he is the light. <laughs> what you think me about it was um, when Frankie Ladeo actually does get a hold of the little girl, and he's pulling her by her hair, remember? And she's like, yeah, like screaming, let her go. Yes, and Michael Jackson screams really loud, like let her, like he's really pissed, like what, like it that's almost the, and- like, like it's triggering him. <laughs> Like in real life, like he didn't like yeah, that in real life. Like it's a real life trigger for him, you know. So it's it was interesting. It wasn't at the beginning. Doesn't doesn't he take her in the beginning at first? No. Um, what happens is is that they actually corner Michael Jackson in this weird fifties kind of crime noir future. And one of the dumbest, it's most very awesome, Batman, isn't it? It's very Dick Tracy, very yeah, Batman. Yeah, there we right? go, there we go, Dick Tracy. Yeah. So go. so the shooting star effect happens, which gives Michael Jackson his power up, right? The shooting star power up and Michael Jackson, apropos of nothing, turns into like a, a, a year 3000 Lamborghini. <laughs> he becomes the turbo team. Remember that part? 
Yes. He, he his car goes a billion miles per hour. <laughs> hey, it, mem- do you remember when they just showed the shadow? It was they didn't show Michael Jackson, but they showed him like slowly squatting down Slur- the shadow farm, and then he turns into this car. Doesn't he turn into like a like a beast? No, he turns into like a he turns into like a supercar, and then the car turns into a cat, and then and then it turns into Michael Jackson. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he turns. Yeah, he turns into the cat. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And this is right before he walks in, and we start Smooth Criminal, uh, which is him kind of finding an alley and finding that club, which I think is full of ghosts. Everyone there is dead, right? I don't. I see. I, I, right, I, that's what I'm I, interpreting. Because when he walks in, it's all cobwebs. It's like The Shining. That's a good question. However, it's like The Shining. Frankie Ledeo's dudes are uh, at the end. At the end of uh, Smooth Criminal, um, they they end up storming or finding Michael Jackson, discovering that he's there, and storming uh, the alleyway and surrounding it. And after they surround it, chaos ensues, and all the people start running and freaking out. Oh, and they yeah. start they start shooting back as well. They start retaliating. And it's this whole thing. So that, I don't know what that is then. I don't. Uh, but that, but that, but you're absolutely right because when he walks in, there's cobwebs and everything, and all of a sudden he presses a few keys uh, on the piano, and then all of a sudden uh, 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 another gentleman appears and he starts snapping slowly. Mm-hmm. And then they start like you know they start going into that that moaning like whatever whatever howling whatever the hell they're doing. No, that's that's in the middle of the song. That oh, happens. that's in the middle of the song. That's yeah, the that's middle right. Of the song. Yeah. That's yeah. We got to oh, talk about that. We got to talk about that. Okay, okay. No, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Go. No, real quick, real quick. First off, one of the coolest movie uh, parts of the movie is where Michael Jackson takes the coin and flips it from across the room. Oh, yeah. And it slides right into the jukebox oh, and hits yeah. it right on beat. <laughs> Yo! <Yeah. laughs> it's the best, dude. Yep. <laughs> and the way that whole video is like this little movie of Michael Jackson kind of being like the Dick Tracy going around stopping crimes, you know, punching out pimps. Shooting people with the stoolie, dude. Michael Jackson got the heat. You know what I mean? Then, like you said, we get to the strangest part of the whole experience. The moaning. Ooh. Yeah. And it becomes this weird night orgy that happens. They start, they start like like stomping their feet on the floor. And like, they start sliding uh, closer to each other. I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't think it was appropriate for kids. <laughs> I used to fast forward that part as a kid. That's the one part I fast forward. It was was it weird or was it boring to you? It was boring. Okay, okay. For me, it wasn't it was weird till I was an adult. Till later, as, as a kid, adult, it was just boring. I, I find it no. As an adult now, I find it inappropriate. Like there was nothing sexual going on, but it's just inappropriate for a kid to listen to a bunch of adults moaning and and kind of rubbing against each other. I don't know what the hell. Was and going it on. last for like three minutes. Yeah, it was pretty long. It was pretty weird. It, was, it, long. it, it was, dropped. It totally. Like knocks the song on its ass, right? And I, okay, are you okay? And, then, and everything starts back up, right? And of course, he does the infamous lean. You know what I'm saying? And that's oh song. my god, one of the best Michael okay, Jackson how many times, ever. How many times did you and your cousins try that at home and then fall your asses on the floor? About a billion. Me too. Same. We here. all tried it. It never yeah. works. You can't uh, do the lean. No one can. Only Michael. No Jackson. one can do the lean except MJ. I don't I know. I think Michael Jackson has bird bones where they're hollow inside, which may allows him to do all the stuff he does. I assume there was biceps in his toes. That's all I was. That's all I can think. Yeah, the, uh, the the lean was impossible. We tried it for hours as kids. We kept falling. I think one of my cousins actually got a nosebleed because he hit the deck pretty hard. <laughs> I forget which one. I think I know the name, but I'm not going to dox him on this podcast. Right. I think you know who it is too. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, Michael Jackson learns the power of gun and pretty much kills a lot of people in this movie. <laughs> he does. He he learns the power of gun and he grabs one and as he's shooting, he's also going ah. He's screaming, which is kind of at a, at a child. I thought that was pretty badass. Yeah, man. As adults, I think there's something wrong with him. Why? Why, why is he doing this? Why is why this the way? Shouting? Why is he this way? <laughs> Why is he this way? Uh, so after all that, in in the in the brouhaha, Frankie Ledeo actually kidnaps the little girl, right? Yes, he does. Her and name is Kelly Parker, by the way. That's Kelly Parker, name. Kelly yeah. Parker. And this is the scene you're talking about where they get they have Michael Jackson surrounded, and he's in this weird citadel, <laughs> right, surrounded by stormtroopers. In 
uh, Frank Dale is trying to trigger Michael Jackson. And like you say, he's pulling on the little girl's hair and it's very violent. It, it looks is. real. It looks yeah. real. Yeah. And Michael Jackson says, leave her alone. And all the, all the, uh, the face mask of the stormtrooper shatter. Oh, that's right. If, if everything that's glass or anything that's, that's shatterable. Shatters. Because of his rage, dude. Alone. Yeah, yeah, alone. yeah. And that's when he becomes a big scary robot, Michael Jackson. And that's when he becomes a Gundam. So, my, so the shooting star happens again, right? I'm sorry, this movie's so badass. It really is. People probably not going to believe what we're saying right now. You right. have to watch no, it for there's yourself. No way that's real. There's no way he turns no into way. that. Why would Michael Jackson oh become God. a Gundam, dude? He, he Makes turned, no he, damn he sense. He goes from Lamborghini to cat to Gundam. <laughs> to Gundam. Flat out mobile suit. He becomes wow. this giant Michael Jackson mech that has a like Michael Jackson mouth <laughs> with glowing yellow eyes. And it's all silver. And he dude, has a, it, this this thing has metal curly hair. I was just going to say he had, metal, he had a metal Jerry curl, yo. <laughs> Real talk. The dumbest, dude. Not even. The best. And then... The, he, the, the the robot has all these weird little reflector shifters that are like using the bullets against the bullets that are being fired at the mech are being reversed back to the to the stone troopers it has lasers and shut yeah <laughs> out of control dude it's so out of control and then for some reason another shooting star happens and Michael Jackson turns into a super plane like the the mech turns it turns into a mac cross it just it becomes this weird like ufo but then frankly dale gets the other hand and shoots down the ufo and i remember crying like oh no i don't remember that that part oh yes i do yes i do because it goes down i didn't interpret it as a ufo (laughs) i don't know what that was man some kind of weird super jet that it turns into yeah yeah. And frankly, Dale shoots it down, and I remember being so confused that I was I was getting misty eyed about plain Michael Jackson going down. No plain Michael Jackson, <laughs> where are you <laughs> going? Evil's gonna win, right? And then uh, it comes back up and it defeats Frankie Ladeo, and Michael Jackson's plane flies off into the cosmos and leaves the kids alone. He leaves the kids there. <laughs> and I, in my notes, I have F, the, F them kids. I'm out. Yeah, he, he, straight up, he straight up just kind of leaves them like hanging on like a rooftop with a bunch of hay surrounded by them. Yeah, waiting for the cops to come clean them up. Right, yeah. Time, putting them back in the system. Way to go, Michael Jackson. Well, he, he was, he's like, well, that's what superheroes do. So, it, like, he was, inter- he was being interpreted as a superhero. That's what they do, right? They don't stick around. They don't stick around. Spider-Man yeah. doesn't even oh, police report. Not Fair even. Enough. Yeah, bye. Yeah, so. so. Michael Jackson comes back um, at the very end, and that's where we get the come together video, which is super weird, mind you. Because I don't remember, I, I vaguely remember this part because I always fell asleep by this part as a kid. What I, what I remember about it, doesn't he, does, don't the kids go on stage with him? Yes, the kids go on stage with him. Uh, they, they're backstage and they go on stage with him and it's like this weird reddish black background with a bunch of like torn up sheets. <laughs> that's all I remember. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, similar to the Dirty Diana video. Yeah. It was a very weird end. Like, like they didn't know how to end it. You know? Oh, and it would come together. We're all going to come together right now. Come together. Yeah. Over me. Yeah. I normally don't do blow by blows in these reviews, but I could not help myself <laughs> with Moonwalker. Well, I mean, the thing is, Moonwalker wasn't wasn't. It's not a lot to it, right? There, there wasn't a lot to it. Substance wise, the actual tiny little skit they did, there, there wasn't too much to it. It's it's exactly what it was supposed to be. Yep. Um, and it was basically, uh, I don't want to say it was a look, look how look. You know what? I can't. I think I will say it. I think it really the, the whole idea of the movie was look how look how freaking great I am, but at the same time look look how I don't need you to be yeah. this great. You know what I mean? I, I think maybe that's where he was coming from. Like I, I think I, I don't think Michael Jackson was what had. I, I don't know, dude, because I don't know the guy, but I, I don't think he was completely ego- egotistical to the point where look how good I am. I think I it was more think... just poking the bear when it came to the industry itself. Like, I think what this was and what Michael Jackson Moonwalker was. In its totality, was him saying, uh, "I appreciate you, but do you appreciate me?" Oh, there you go. Exactly. I appreciate you, and this is how much I love you. This is how much 
I I'm showing you how much you love me and how much I appreciate it. But at the same time, do you appreciate me? Do you appreciate for me for who I am and all I, and what I am is this whole ma- hodgepodge of weirdness that this movie is and how the media misconstrues who he is. Right. Constantly, you know? constantly. I, I don't know what it was or, or what set it off. Maybe it was the, uh, his ideals of, of self-love and, and, and unity and, and, you know, who knows, who knows? Who knows? Cause, because those who were close to him said he was a pretty sh- quiet guy. Like in real life, he was right. a very shy guy. Like, um, I don't tell a lot of people this, but you know, this, my father has met him. You know, yeah. so, you know, he, 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 he's, he's met him. He's seen him. He's had to sign NDAs because, because of those reasons, but the, the, he's never said one bad thing about Michael Jackson. Not one. Yeah. And a lot you of know, people, even like, during the crazy allegations, Macaulay Culkin was like, yeah, that's a bunch of BS. There's right? no way. There's no way. Right? right. And I think this film kind of is the perfect snapshot of Michael Jackson before all that madness started to happen. Yes, yes. This was right before. This this was when, uh, to to take from from personal quotes, this was when Michael Jackson was at his purest. <laughs> yeah, this is when Michael Jackson was at his purest. Too bad it was in nineteen ninety eight. Um, right, not nineteen ninety eight. Right, exactly. <laughs> but this was right before the whole second coming of Michael Jackson, which was the uh, Dangerous album, which was after this. I think no, Dangerous was right around this, wasn't it? I thought Dangerous came out in uh, the 90s, about 90, 91. Yeah, because that's the remember the time <laughs> Michael Jackson, right? Scream, that era. Right, yeah. Jam, Michael Jackson. Would, jam. 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 Black and white. That song. Black and white Michael Jackson. Yeah, yep, black and white. So, that, my kids love that song, by the way. They yeah. They love that song. They don't you even know. know what it's about, and they love it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Michael Jackson. And then yeah. the deeper you go into his discography... You start really listening because I was listening to the Dangerous album maybe like a month ago, just head to toe. And there's a lot of songs about him being very irritated with the with media, yeah, and with the people. And people won't leave him alone and let him be himself. And you know that's heavily influenced in Moonwalker. I think one of my favorite songs that he's ever done. Oh, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna do one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is um, um. I don't know what it's called, but it's the one uh, where they don't care about us. All I want to say is that they don't really they don't care, really about, care us. about us. Yeah, yeah that's one of my favorite songs. Oh, of his. Like, it, it's such a huge, and, and it's interesting because like I said, Michael Jackson was always an oozer of love and unity yeah. and, and peace. He was and, an activist. And it, let's find another way to, you know, conscientious, uh, conscientious objector, ob- objector. Like, <laughs> conscientious let's, find, objector. Let's, find, let's find another way to go about this. But that song was, he was pissed. Yeah, man. He was he, pissed in that song. Man, It's it was so cool to see him be more of a human being as opposed to this almost semi-perfect robot that that's what i liked you know, about that era of michael jackson like earth song was a earth very song personal was, song that's right. that's probably my second favorite michael I jackson i know that's song. one of your favorite songs yeah <laughs> i love earth song i'm gonna listen to it after we're done i bet you are you're so uh, cheap. <laughs> shut up i'm so tip uh, i'm so predictable if you know me <laughs> um yeah so all in all from this is it, like you like you said. It's not a lot of substance to Moonwalker. Uh, it's very nostalgic, of right. course. The nostalgia, but if, everything. But if you are any kind of fan of what Michael Jackson was, the legacy he left behind, I, and you've never seen Moonwalker, I implore you to watch this concert, to watch this film, this documentary, whatever it is. I really, it's hard to really quantify what Moonwalker is. It's, a, it's an experience. <laughs> You know, Toots, uh, if you were to score Moonwalker from zero to five uh, sparkly gloves, what would you rate it? You see, that's not fair because, like you said, the nostalgia, I mean, the nostalgia in this movie, it, it, it doesn't hold, there's nothing that can hold a candle to how I feel when I watch Moonwalker. The only other thing that, that comes close is certain episodes of The Simpsons. Um, you know, I had to throw some Simpsons in this episode. Of course, always. Um, I'm going to give it a five. Absolutely. Because this, yeah. this, oh my God, this, this doesn't age. And as aged as it is. And when, if people who haven't seen it do watch it, they will see how aged it really is. But the it's, only reason why, why I see, I see it, it's timeless is because my kids sit there and they enjoy it just as much as I do. And they're from a completely 
ridiculously completely different generation or they have so many other things that they can be distracted by. And yet somehow Michael Jackson still releases this amazing melodic energy that my, my tiny little babies find attractive. And I think that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing to be a timeless human being and to be able to have that. I mean, to be able to have that, like, damn, like not everybody has that. And for some reason, this special, the special man happened to have, he has that in spades, even, even um, after death. So yeah. solid five for me, babe. It's, t- it's tough. Cause like you said, on one hand is a big giant gorilla on my neck of nostalgia. I, I absolutely love Moonwalker. I absolutely love it. At the same time, this is a review. This is a review of a film and uh, there's not a lot of meat to this. Michael Jackson's acting is horribly great. Uh, <laughs> right. when, there's, when there's acting to be had, it's very cheesy, very tongue in cheek. Uh, Joel Pesci has a ball in this in this in this role as Frankie Liddell. That being said, um, it's a five. I can't. I was going to give it a four point five just to be contrarian, but it's a five. It's Yay! A five. Uh, you never do that. Ugh. Yeah, no. I was. I was. Of course, it's a five. <laughs> of course, it's a five. It's, it's Moonwalker. Uh, it's one of those things, like you said. It's timeless. It's a. It's a snapshot of one of the most talented human beings of all time. Right. It, like imagine Beethoven doing a Moonwalker. Right. Like, like you know, it's impossible. Like you only you only know him from his music. But if you just kind of wanted to get a, a small glimpse into the mind state of Michael Jackson, this is the closest yeah. you're going to get. Because uh, the man is no longer with us, and his legacy is palpable to the point where, like you said, it even resonates with your children who are like you said a completely different generation multiple generations removed right right yeah can still right. sit now and listen watch moonwalker on youtube and get a kick out of it fall in love with it like we fell in love with it you know because the man just had that much talent that right. and, and he had so much to say that even as a little kid it resonates with you isn't that interesting you. because I, when we were kids it resonated with us 100 percent and this was back when Michael Jackson was the biggest thing on earth. Like I said, he was he was selling out concerts. He was making people pass out. He was everywhere. I remember one of my fondest memories is the first time I went to Vegas. Uh, me and my dad, my dad took me to Circus Circus, and there was the Moonwalker arcade game. And my dad sat me down with like five dollars worth of nickels and said, "Sit here, I'll be back." And I sat there and I beat Moonwalker in one sh- in one sitting with all my nickels. And I beat Moonwalker. That is a cool story. That's the very Moonwalker. first video game I ever beat by myself with this Moonwalker. Oh my god, that's so freaking cool! With what was it on? It, it was it was on Sega, no? It, it was it was eventually on Sega, but I played the arcade version, like in the Circus Circus arcade. Oh my god, I'm kind of jealous. That's yeah, kind of cool, actually, because I had we had the Sega version. I had the Sega version, 100, yeah. percent where you would capture bubbles and turn it to the Michael Jackson yeah. robot for a split yeah. second. Yeah, I love that game. Absolutely love that game, and I'm sure oh. the game. Uh, some of the gaming collectors here know of the game, but they may not know it's an actual film. So this is more of a cry to just say, check this out. It's not long; it's like an hour and a half. Unfortunately, it's a ver- it's not very easy to find. There isn't a, at least from my knowledge, there isn't like a 4K uh, rendition of Moonwalker. No, there is not. It is available on YouTube. It is there. It's not great. Like you said, it's it's not in the best format, but it's it's there. I think you can stream it from Amazon Prime, but you have to pay for it. Uh, but however you find this gem, I hi, I can't recommend Moonwalker enough for yourself, for your children, to just enjoy and celebrate the life of Michael Jackson uh, through this film. And it's honestly one of my, one of the films that actually shaped my personality. It's one of those personality shepherds, you know? Where can we find you? Uh, 2D, you can find me at 2D Oh My Hero on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. I'm, I'm, I'm around. Um, so yeah, that's me, 2D Oh My Hero. Uh, where else could we find you? You can find me also on a brand new podcast called Off the Mark. There uh, you go. It is a uh, retrospective uh, podcast, uh, newsworthy, if, if nothing else. Um, so if you're not into news, maybe it's not for you. If you're into trying to be informed, you know, 
come at me. Let's let's go for it. Um, yeah, it's, off the mark cast. It's a hodgepodge. It's a hodgepodge, and I want to personally thank you, Mike G, for the inspiration to, <clears throat> excuse me, to kick off um, our uh, my own cast. You know, if you're uh, you are sensei, and and I appreciate everything about you. Don't dream it, be it. Yeah, don't do that. Don't say that. Fair enough. If you love this content and <laughs> you would like to support us monetarily, you can also, you can always do that via our Patreon, which is Patreon forward slash MOTN, where if you feed the money into the Twilight Zone devil machine, it may just tell you the future. It may lie to you. You don't know. Give it another nickel. You'll figure it out. Um, and that's a deep pull. I'm not going to go any deeper than that. But if you want to support us non monetarily, you can always do so by liking our content, by subscribing to our channels, and by commenting on our posts, because feedback is important. Did you like this episode? Did you love it? Did it inspire you to watch Moonwalker? What's your favorite Michael Jackson video? Find us on Twitter. That's at MNerdiverse. Let us know what your favorite Michael Jackson moment was. Uh, and was it his Pepsi commercials? Was it that one time he crossed over Michael Jordan? Let us know. <laughs> There's a lot to pick from. Um, if this is your first time listening to the episode, I would like to say hello and welcome you to the Nerdiverse. Once again, I'd like to thank Tootie Odin for being our guest. Thank you so much. I had a blast as usual. This was this was meant to be. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And with that, I will always ask you to look towards the skies. Look towards the skies.